It's Super Bowl Sunday and I thought I'd share a clip with you on what I'm doing today. I'm out here in the shop and I'm just now getting back on my scraping. Just uh, getting things set up and I'm able to use the, the hand scraper. So I wanted to uh, uh, tell you about some scraper some, uh, scraper blades that I just got. One of my viewers, his name is uh, Frank Purser, and he uh, years ago he was he was taught how to hand scrape and he used to do that as uh, as part of his business and now he he's rebuilding uh, spindle drives and electronics on CNC machines and he says he still does a little bit of scraping here and there but uh, not like he used to so he was watching the videos he follows the my channel and seeing where I needed some scraper blades so he decided to send me a few of them. So these are the these are the ones that he sent. We got a few of the carbide inserts right here that can be uh, ground in. We got this this style too. This one I'm not really familiar with right here. Uh, I'm not really sure about those, but these are what I'm used to using so far. He goes in a holder just like this. So I've already got one of them this is another one that he gave me and i've already touched it up i'll show you my little grinder setup that i'm using so this is the scraper blade that i bought from keith rucker so this is all i have right now to do my scraping with all right here's the little angle plate that i took and started scraping on and what i'm doing is i'm just getting a little bit more practice on this one side and and uh that's my last blue one right there and it looks like it's it's coming in pretty good so I'm gonna keep working at that. As far as the uh, granite table, I don't know how flat this is because I, I haven't had it inspected or checked. So I'm only assuming that it's, that it's kind of flat. It feels like the, uh, the corners and the sides are smoother than in the middle. This one's been used pretty rough. There's little chips and stuff in there. So I'm hoping that the sides of it are a little more flat than the middle. So that's kind of why I've got the uh, the ink over here on the side right there, and I had a I had a little stupid accident whenever I was first squeezing that out this morning, and I thought the uh, the cap had a hole in it, and it didn't. And when I squeezed it, it like just shot all of it out. Got some down there on the floor, so I was able to take some shim stock and scoop that up and pour it back in the little bottle right there. So I have most of it. It's probably uh, at least three quarters full. So that's what that was. I just left what I scraped up there and just using that today instead of wiping it all off. So I'm going to keep working on this guy and trying to get it scraped into where I feel comfortable with it. And then after I do, I want to set it up and, and see about milling that side. So over here, I've got my Baldor carbide grinder and I already had a diamond wheel mounted on one side of it right there. So I've got it over here and I'm using it to uh, touch up those carbide scraper blades right there. Now that's, that's what I'm going to be using. I really would like to pick up one of those other grinders like I showed in, the, uh, in my scraping video. The one's made by AccuFinish, I think it is. So just got to keep my eyes out there on eBay and that kind of stuff for for grinders to, to come up and maybe I can uh, pick up one of those to add to the inventory around here. So anyway, I'm gonna get back on that and play around with it and just kind of enjoy my day. It's, it's really nice outside today. The, uh, the weather's really nice. I think it's about 11 o'clock and it's been nice. It's been nice like this all weekend. So just trying to enjoy my weekend. Doing it like this is still very foreign to me. It's it's definitely going to take some practice getting used to doing it like this. I find that if I do it the way that Richard showed everybody to do it, I'm getting a little bit better results using the palm of my hand to kind of do like that versus just... seems like when I try to do it with my hand like that, I'm not stay I'm not maintaining where I want to scrape. So I keep trying to practice and force myself to just 
kind of hold it like this and just lightly bump it. But like with anything, it's just going to take some practice. The other thing <clears throat> that you have to learn to do is keep keep the center of that radius of that tool where you want it to cut. A lot of times whenever I'm trying to bump a little high spot off, I'm actually next to it on either side because, because of how you have this tipped. And what I'm doing, I just keep looking at it through the, I'm looking at the high spots through the reflection and I'm just trying to pick some out. go still more of the same I think I got this around 20 points per inch I went ahead and just scribed a one inch square on that one side and counted and I've actually got exactly 20 points right there now I think it's only maybe 30 40 percent of your contact area so there's definitely room to be improvement there but I'm kind of happy with that because it's uh, pretty well even across the whole thing. There's a couple spots that's low. There's a little bit there and right down in this area. But what I wanted to do is try to get it flat, uh, practice scraping. And after I do this, I wanted to go ahead and, and set it up in the milling machine and mill this other side. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to continue to practice on this and try to try to get better at it. But I'm going to stop for this for now and uh, move on to some other stuff. But uh, I had fun today getting to practice hand scraping in my own shop. That's the first time I've got to do it here. I want to go ahead and get this, get this milled flat now. So we've got this set up in the K&T. Should be nice and square on the back side there. Got it pushed up against the back jaw. And I had to get it indicated this way. So I think we, <clears throat> we're about there. I'll show you got a pretty good average from one side to the other so that's pretty close right there we're gonna I've already got her locked in and I'll show you front to back there also it's it's really out of square So now you see how bad it is. And we're going to go ahead and set up a, a tool. I think what I'm going to use, I think we're going to fly cut this. So we've got this big fly cutter right here. It takes a little TPG insert. I think we'll use that because I'll be able to cover the whole, the whole width of that at one time. We got the fly cutter mounted in a collet chuck here. I've already got her stuck out and centered on the part, so we've got about equal equal hangout over each side of the angle plate here. So this uses a TPG 200 series carbide insert. I've got one in this pack right here that should be a, it looks like a 222. It's got a little bit more of a radius on the on the nose there which is what I want. I was trying to find a bigger nose radius. That's the best one I could find. That looks like a one radius on that, but that corner was chipped anyway. So we're going to go ahead and use this, that old insert right there.
right, since we're roughing it in, basically, I'm gonna go ahead and speed the feed rate up some. That's a one inch a minute feed rate. So far, man, it looks like the tool's doing pretty good. All right, so after that cut, well, I mean during the cut really, but it started getting some bad vibration. And that's one of the problems with this angle plate is that there's no rigidity there. You don't have any support rib. So this thing's actually trying to flex as it's making that cut. I'm going to try to use these adjustable parallels right here. These are the Starrett 154B. These were my granddad's. I had to get this one loosened up because it was still wrapped up in the original little tissue paper in the box. <clears throat> it was kind of stuck together, but you can adjust them on size. And I'm going to see if I can... The problem is, you know, if you put too much on there, you'll actually be pushing that up and you won't be cutting a square face. So I'm going to try to get this to where they're just touching. I'll just put two of them on there since it's kind of wide. And it's touching that back edge right there, so just trying to lightly, lightly squeeze it. Those parallels seem to be helping, keeping that bounce out of it. So we're starting another cut. I went up another five thousandths. We're going to see if that'll clean it up. If that doesn't clean it up all the way back, I'm going to back it off there and go down again. I think this is going to be my finished pass across there. That very back corner, it's just now cleaning up. There was one little hole back there. I only moved the table up like three, three or four thousandths and slowed the feed rate down, trying to improve the finish on there. That's looking pretty good. All right, that thing is finally square. So that should be that should be close enough now where I can I can get it scraped in. There was this one little area right through here where it was trying to it tried to start chattering again lightly. I had to reach in there and try to tighten the um, adjustable parallels up a little bit. That's what they were. They just kind of loosened up on me. But still, it feels nice. I'm going to go ahead and take it out of there. Okay. There's our scrape side and our, now our machine, our machine side. I'd like to try to check the squareness of this single plate that I just milled. And there's a there's several ways you can do it. There's a couple really accurate ways that you can do it. One is if you have a cylindrical square, you can check it that way. I don't have a cylindrical square, so I'm going to use I'm going to use a different method. And this isn't this again, this still isn't super accurate, but this is uh, I should put me within a quarter mile of it anyway. So I'm going to use a surface gauge. I'm using the ball end of the surface gauge right here. And I've got a test indicator set up damn near the center of that bar as I can get it. Here's our angle plate. There's the scraped inside. 
and our freshly milled sod. So what I'd like to see is how perfectly square that is and perpendicular. We can check it in one spot like this. So like I said, I don't have a cylindrical square, but I do have this. This is a very high quality angle plate that was given to me by Paul. I shared a video a while back now of a toolbox that uh, Paul had given me. He's a retired toolmaker and machinist. And this is one that he had made. As well as these one, two, three blocks. These are the ones that I call my good one, two, three blocks. And every time I test these things, whether mic them or sweeping them, I'm usually within one tenth of being the same thickness and parallel. Matter of fact, earlier, it was this one right here. If you look closely, you can see a little bit of a blue haze on there. I actually blued it since I had the, the ink over there and, and it was, it looked flat. So I'm going to use this as my square reference right here because I know this is going to be really close. But even this needs to be checked with a with a master square. So that's some tools that were that we got on the wish list. You know, we got a cylindrical square. I would like to find a, a, a good quality granite square. So I'm kind of looking for those. So let's take our surface gauge and we're going to come up to it. And rock it on that ball right there. And it looks like I've got it one tenth over zero. So let's see if we can adjust that. So what we're looking at, that's that's our highest point of contact with the indicator needle there. So we're just rotating on that ball. So I know that my zero point on this is going to be, you know, where it's touching there is going to be zero on the indicator. So that's that's square. Move that off out of the way. And we'll slide this one over here and try it. Okay, four tenths. That's what I'm getting there. And again, you're just coming up and rocking, you're looking for that same point. Two tenths right there. Three tenths. All right, so about three tenths. That's not too bad. I need to look at it over here and use both my hands where I can see it. It's jumping across that machine face there, but I'm seeing between two and three. That's better than I thought. Okay. <clears throat> now what we could do is we could reset it. I could reset this to a higher point. It's just tricky with this uh, particular snug that I have with the indicator there but come up here a little bit higher you know and and reference up here higher in a different position but I'm gonna leave it like it is though I'm just trying to have a little bit of have a little fun with some of this inspection stuff here and this is something that I had uh, learned about from Richard so thought I'd try it out 
using the ball end of the surface gauge there.